Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm showing you how you can um, receive SNMP traps using the Cacti Syslog uh, plugin. Now the Syslog plugin is great at receiving, uh, you guessed it, Syslog, um, but we also have the ability to receive SNMP traps um, so that we can receive additional information from the devices we're monitoring. So that means that Cacti can do SNMP polling, syslog, and now SNMP traps. In order to accomplish this, we just need to um, run some basic configurations um, on the server, and uh, away we go. So the first thing we'll need is SNMP TT. So that's available at snmptt.org. Now, um, they will also need the SNMP TT uh, GitHub repository because there's an important script on here. So you can either install it by the package or install it uh, by compiling it yourself. Okay, so in this demo, we're going to use the um, uh, package method. Okay, so very first thing we're going to do is log on to our server. I'm using a CentOS box, so I'm going to install, uh, oops, I'm going to install SNMPTT. Okay, if you're on a Debian box, it's app-get install snmptt. Okay, now that's installed. Um, the other thing we need is SNMP trapd. SNMP trapd should already be on your system since it's uh, part of the net SNMP libraries that are required for uh, Cacti to run in the first place. So the very first thing we need to do is modify a file for SNMP trapd. Okay, so that is located in the uh, Etsy um, sysconfig directory. Oops, and there will be a file for SNMP trap D. Okay, now I've already gone ahead and modified it. However, all we're looking for is to add the option dash O N in this directory. Oh, sorry, in this file. Uh, in, in the options that preserves, and this is all in the SNMPTT documentation, um, that, uh, we need the dash O N, uh, which is right here to have the SNMP trap D pass the full OID representation of that MIP file. Okay. Of the SNMP trap MIP that is. Okay. So we're going to save that. Okay, next thing we'll do is go over to Etsy SNMP where there will be an SNMP trap D configuration file. Okay, so this file um, says that by default, SNMP trap D will not process any traps and we have to configure it to do so. Okay, so I'm just going to use a public SNMP uh, community string. Um, most likely in your production environment, you're not using public, you're going to be using something a bit more secure, but for, um, demo purposes, I'll just use public. Now this says that this public string is allowed to log execute commands and, um, the net allows it, uh, allows us to specify what network it's coming from. Okay. But. I'll leave that up to you to read in the documentations on how to do that and uh, if you need to. Okay, this also is an example of SNMP version two. For SNMP version three, I would also recommend reading the SNMP trap D configuration um, uh, manual because that uh, for V3, you'll need the engine ID in most cases, unless you're doing SNMP informs. Uh, and, and it's a bit more of a complex a configuration. Okay. So now that we have, uh, that done, what we'll do is in the documentation for SNMP TT, they tell you that if you're using daemon mode, which I am in this case, that we need to call on this program, uh, to pass from SNMP trap D over to SNMP TT. Okay. So SNMP TT is essentially a presentation middleware type deal where SNMP trap D receives the trap in the beginning. SNMP TT then, uh, sorry, trap D passes that over to SNMP TT, which will translate that SNMP trap into, uh, for lack of a better word, English, and then passes that over to Syslog 
so that the syslog um, plugin can receive that as a syslog message. Okay, so now that we've saved that, let's go ahead and start and enable the SNMP trap the uh, service. Okay, we see that it's on. Okay, it's running error free. And now if we go to bar log, there will be an SNMP trap D log file. Okay, so now that I'm going to go over to my, uh, I'll go over to my test server, which is not the local host, but uh, another server. You can also do this same thing where we send an SNMP trap um, to, uh, we can send it to the local host, but I like doing it from a different machine. That way I know that it's receiving it over the network and not just on itself. Okay. Um, let me just send this one trap. Okay. So I send the trap and boom, we can see that um, SNP trap D has received the trap. And as you can see, that's why we need SNP TT because now this is the, the bulk of the trap, not very useful. So we needed something to translate it, right? So if we go back to the SNMP, uh, Etsy SNMP folder, there's another configuration file, snmptt.ini. So let's edit that. For the most part, I'm gonna leave this uh, default, except I'm gonna change the mode from standard to daemon Read the documentation on uh, the pros and cons of that, right? And then I'm going to look for a section for syslog. Okay, so we see that um, we see syslog is enabled. Well, syslog equals one is enabled. And now I wanna also enable unknown trap log. That way, if SNPTT receives an SNMP trap and it doesn't know what to do with it, I could see that in the log as well. Okay, so leave that all the same. I'm going to enable, I'm gonna start and then I will enable SNPTT, check its status. Okay, we see that it is running. Okay. And let's be sure that it's running properly. There is its own directory, and I'm going to look at snmptt.log. Okay. Actually, hold on, I've gone a bit too fast here, because there's another direct, uh, another file called snmptt.conf. Now, what snmptt.conf is, is the mappings of these OIDs to the message. Now, I will show you that you don't have to do this by hand. You can if you need to, right? Um, however, there is a way to convert a vendor MIB file into this layout so that you don't have to do all this by hand. So I'm going to copy over this one OID. Okay. And let's look at the SNMPTT log. And I'm going to send over a couple of test ones here. And you could see that SMPTT is working. And so this was from my earlier testing for some BGP testing. And this is the new one where uh, we see that the device reinitialization cold start. And when I come up here, you could see that that trap is mapped to this. Okay, so very, very useful. Um, very, very useful here because now instead of that ugly message here, okay, we have a, a user friendly message here. Okay, so what's needed now is the reason why I brought up the script that we'll have to include in our setup, and I'll show you what's happened here. 
So what happens with um, SNMPTT is that since SNMPTT resides on the server, right? SNMPTT is writing to syslog and our syslog and syslog ng will also see that message as if it's coming from the local host, which it is. So the problem is that the device will always show as local host. And that's not very useful for us when it comes to trying to figure out where this is coming from and using all the features that syslog has to offer, uh, the syslog plugin that is has to offer by, you know, alarming and all that stuff. So the SNMPTT uh, cat syslog connector, okay, essentially takes the variable substitution available in uh, SNMPTT and formulates a uh, syslog, um, uh, MySQL write into the syslog incoming table, uh, which syslog uses to collect and display uh, the syslog messages. Okay, so how does this work? Essentially, we're going to take, uh, we'll take this sample command here. I already have the script in opt. Okay, so I'll just put it in opt and you'll see that I have it set to execute it by chmod plus, H, uh, plus x and then the um, command, or sorry, the script. And I have it owned by SNMPTT. Okay, so if I go back over to the SNMP, Etsy SNMP uh, folder, if I go to snmptt.com, there's a section here for exec, okay? And exec, uh, as you could imagine, means ex execute. So I'm just gonna put the command over here. Now, this command says, okay, please execute here, and I want you to put the host name and the alert, and we're gonna format it correctly here. I'm going to do that. I'm going to restart the SNMP TT service. Okay. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to execute the same test. And what I expect to see now is SNMP TT is going to execute that command. And by default, it's going to throw it into its own program ID called traps. Okay. And you can see from my earlier testing that the device ID is now the testing server's IP address. So 1.3. So that allows the connection between SNMP TT and uh, the syslog plugin to write uh, and, and maintain this uh, the device IP. And you can see that it's working right here. Okay, so the device 192.168.1.3, device reinitialized uh, re cold start. Okay, so now we are done with that configuration, okay? So, and then again, traps. Now, if you want to throw it into something else, uh, that is possible, of course. Uh, you would just modify, uh, you would just modify one of the directives here, uh, which is traps, okay? And change that to something else that you want. All right, so, before we wrap up, there was that one thing I told you about where that snmptt.conf, now you want to use, say, a vendor MIB. So now I have a MIB here for BGP from Cisco. Okay, so I'm going to use snmptt convert MIB. I'm going to say dash dash in equals BGP4. And then out equals snptt dash one. Okay, I don't want to mess around here. 
And as you can see, it has used that to translate the BGP MIB from Cisco and used its MIB, the, the vendor MIB file, to show what the uh, event means as well as the OID. And all you would do is actually copy this over and you can call it snmptt.conf.ciscobgp. And it will read that actually, once you restart the snmptt daemon, um, or sorry, the service, it will um, then map out these traps to what we've seen over here. So I'll leave all of the links uh, in the video description below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away in the comment section. And uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Have a good day.